many, many, many families had a lot of struggle with money, with finding the ways to uh, feed their family. So teenagers suffered a lot. Young people's mental health during COVID-19. Tim schoot uiterkamp Hi, you led and coordinated the Free Press Unlimited side of a project that focused on mental health during COVID-19. Um, what exactly did the project entail? Yeah, so this was part of a, a larger program coordinated by UNICEF, also with the participation of Children's uh, Radio Foundation. And we conducted uh, research and encouraged discussion on, on the topic of uh, young people's uh, mental health in uh, nine countries, of which uh, Free Press Unlimited was responsible for uh, four of these countries. Two unique components, um, the participatory nature. So in each of these four countries, we worked with one or two young people yeah. uh, who conducted the interviews and the focus groups mm. and uh, were part of interpreting and giving meaning to the findings yeah. so that we could really involve them also in uh, making sense of what this experience has been like for their peer group. Furthermore, um, we provided them with uh, a platform for sharing their viewpoints and experiences through the, the media production uh, angle of, the, of this project, um, Yeah, for which we worked with our uh, network of Vadada News for Kids partners. Wow, that sounds very important and a significant project to have. One of the things that stood out to me from just glancing over the findings is that social media is actually helped young people uh, cope with mental health during COVID-19. Um, what were some of the main findings that you found interesting when you look at the whole project? Yeah, so, well, first of all, one thing that really stood out to me is that um, there's a trend that's truly global. We saw it in all of the countries that we looked at, and I recognize it myself a little bit as well, namely that uh, uh, young persons, uh, compared to a slightly older generation, their parents, for instance, have a much greater vocabulary and willingness to engage and talk about mental health and to um, see it as something that needs to be taken seriously. Worldwide. I would say so, yeah. Yeah, that is the impression that I've gotten from this and that I found was really impressive. We also have very two very special guests joining us from Ecuador live. Now, before we jump into conversation with them, we'll just watch a short video um, that tells us more about this project. María de los Ángeles es parte de las miles de familias que han salido de su país en busca de mejores oportunidades. Pero ¿cómo ha sido este viaje? Ella nos cuenta cuáles son sus experiencias y motivaciones en su nuevo hogar. Mis planes cambiaron ya que, pues en el transcurso del tiempo, porque yo allá ya estuviera graduada, ya tuviera casi dos años de carrera en la universidad y, y pues probablemente estuviera trabajando en la empresa de mi mamá que era de, de lubricantes para auto, entonces llegar a Colombia a hacerme un plan de vida. No, bueno, ok, puedo hacer un curso después del bachillerato porque no estaba legal, me faltaban papeles para entrar en una universidad, entonces se me complicó. Después mi papá me dijeron, no, nos vamos para Ecuador. Yo, ah, bueno, vámonos para Ecuador. Y, uh, brincamos. Pero en la pandemia, eh, yo, pues, un momento en el que me sentía muy triste, y eh, una amiga me, me daba muchos consejos y me recomendó otras canciones. Entonces, estas canciones eh, son de un álbum específico que se llama Love Yourself. O sea, Amate. Entonces, yo me las empecé a escuchar y a raíz de esto, pues empezó un amor a esta banda. That was a great video from in Ecuador uh, by one of our guests, Amalia Arboleda. Thank you so much. That's, a, that's an amazing video. Can you tell us a little bit about um, your participation in the project? Amalia, we'll start with you. You've been actively involved. Um, what was it like for you to conduct this research? It was uh, fulfilling because uh, mental health is, has always been like in my life. Um, I've always been like, reading or I don't know, like visiting different psychologists or therapists because I want to know myself a little bit more. But I also know that in my country, um, it's, there's a lot of stigma. Like even in my case, like being involved in these projects or being actively in therapy, like my parents have a lot of these stigmas too. So I kind of um, was related like very closely to everyone that I was in touch with um, 
and it was great to actually discover that younger generations have already know how to express themselves and like for example i don't know like when we were young maybe uh, we didn't know the terms and we were confused and maybe we were just like a little bit nervous but now uh, young people know how to define anxiety or panic attacks so uh for me that's like kind of a relief <laughs> you know that they actually know a little bit so they can ask for help because they know that they're not feeling quite well so yeah of all the encounters you had in this project, I mean, how many were there? But also, which story, particular story, maybe stood out to you the most? Oh, I think that Monica already knows my answer. <laughs> <laughs> the particular story that I love the most um, is a girl called Claudia. She's also a Venezuelan girl, but she arrived here in 2020. So when the pandemic here we were like in lockdown and she didn't know how to, you know, like make friends because everything was closed. She also um, has like a great gift of drawing and that drawing became a um, digital illustration and that became like, uh, she now is like a tattoo artist here in my city that, and she's an active feminist. Um, I don't know, I, I really like her a lot because she's, super intelligent and at the same time she and even though that those couple of years were super hard for her she knew how to reach for help because she had like um her family were super supportive so uh she now knows that she's got like conditions that she has to take care and she's taking meds and all of that so i'm um, that's like a great news for me. <laughs> it sounds like a, a force of nature and someone who also is aware of the importance of, of mental health. Um, another guest joining us today is uh, Monica, Monica Maruri. She is the executive director of the Ibero-American Institute of Natural and Cultural Heritage and also an active member of the Wadada community. Uh, so Monica, welcome. Um, what were some of the insights you gained from working closely with Amalia and other people involved in the project, young people? I think that the, the, there are some insights that really impressed me interviewing or listening to all the interviews that the team, the Wadada Ecuador team did. Uh, first, the, and, I, and I think that it's a beautiful finding, the role of art for healing and for teenagers. I mean, teenagers find in music, in painting, in drawing, in creating, in creativity, in art, a channel to heal, to express themselves, to express their emotions, to express what hurts them. So I think that we should be looking at art uh, in the, this teenage group as a very important thing uh, in, in, in mental health and uh, for teen. Another thing that I found out was that even though we were focusing on vulnerable groups, and this means Venezuelans, we had a lot of Venezuelans or migrant population, teenagers, uh, uh, disabilities, we had a, a blind kid, we had, but I think that at least in this country, teenagers are a vulnerable group. I mean, they all in COVID times became a vulnerable group because they had little help because of the stigma that Amalia mentioned. And also during COVID, many, many, many families had a lot of struggle with money, with finding the ways to uh, feed their family. So teenagers suffered a lot. So we had one of our stories was a girl. She, she doesn't have a disability. She's not a migrant. She doesn't have a special problem. She's an Ecuadorian teenager that her family had a lot of trouble during COVID to feed the family. And she's a middle-class girl. And she really had a lot of problems and fights and, and discussions with her parents. And, and she's really suffering. So what we found was that we had to look in another way 
to teenagers uh, uh, around mental health and around the kind of help they have. And because of what Amalia said, if you have the, the means, the uh, uh, money to pay for therapy, then you can get it. But if you don't have it, uh, you're in trouble. Wow, thank you for that insight. Because Tim, I want to ask you now, in line with what's just been said, from the perspective of Free Press Unlimited being a, a media development uh, organization, what is the role of, of media in, in providing a voice on, on matters, important matters like this? Yeah, I mean, you're quite right. I think this is probably the first first time that young people's mental health is discussed on Studio Free Press Matters. Um, <laughs> Good point. <laughs> but um, yeah, so... I think um, a media can be a very powerful force for change if it represents the experiences and viewpoints, problems of all groups in society, not only uh, the dominant ones. In this case, what is represented here is the experiences and viewpoints of, uh, of teenagers with regards to their mental health. And um, being represented and having this platform uh, in this way gives them agency to, to break uh, an existing culture of silence. Amalia and Monica mentioned the, the stigmas that are out there, which I think a lot, a lot of people will, will recognize. And um, also important, of course, is to show other young people that they're not alone in uh, facing these challenges and getting, helping to get that conversation uh, going even more than it's already, uh, already doing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Amalia, let's just bring it back. One more question. What would you say to young people struggling with mental health right now? Um, well, I think that each of you have to do it like at your own time because sometimes you can feel overwhelmed, but you don't necessarily like find the words or know how to reach out for help. So it's like, just take your time. It's your process. And it's not always, you know, like, um, like everyone says, says like there are ups and downs. So I think that, yeah, take your time to really know how you're feeling. Um, but I know that it's hard to like take the first step and to actually like ask for help. If you take that step, then you're already like on the other side, you know, and it gets easier. And of course, like the way it's like tough, and there are going to be like good days and bad days, but yeah, it's for yourself. So like, you're the only one that can help yourself. So I think that just do it <laughs> basically. Thank you very much. Thanks to everyone who participated today. See you next time.